Welcome back. Today, our statement reads, Part A, check the boundary condition for the field of the configuration of a solenoid. B, check the boundary conditions for the vector potential for the configuration of a spherical shell. What we should know, the boundary conditions for the magnetic field are B above minus B below is equal to mu naught, the uh, area current density times the normal direction, or cross product, and A above equal A below, followed by the normal derivative above minus the normal derivative below is equal to negative mu naught K. All right, so part A. We know that the field of a solenoid is consistent inside the uh, solenoid, but zero outside. So above would be zero, and below would be mu naught n times i in a z hat direction, because we can stand it up. And then uh, n i is just equal to the area current density, so that's k, hence uh, it equals mu naught k z hat. So with the solenoid, we know that n is uh, negative s, or not negative, but uh, s hat. So k cross n hat is equal to uh, negative k z hat. Follow that through, and we see that when we put this together with boundary condition 1, that it checks out. You get negative mu naught k on the left and on the right. So we're good to go there. For b, the vector potential for the spherical shell, which we did in the textbook, is equal to this piecewise definition for inside and outside the shell. But note that at the surface, we're equal, okay? So we uh, plug in big R for little r, and we see that they indeed cancel the mu naught r squared omega times sigma over 3 times sine theta in the phi hat direction. So good to go on that one. Now we got the messy part where we have to take the normal derivatives. The normal direction for this is in the r direction, and therefore we can plug in or uh, take the partial derivative of the potential above or outside the shell, and uh, we see that here that we end up with uh, negative 2 mu naught r omega sigma over 3 sine theta phi hat. Below, we end up with mu r omega sigma over 3 sine phi hat. Now, when we take their difference, we end up with negative mu naught r omega sigma sine theta phi hat. But for the setup, the current density is k equal sigma v, where v is uh, the cross product of omega with r, because we're moving in a, a angular velocity. And therefore, we, we end up with uh, k equals sigma omega r big R sine theta in the fiat direction. So when we multiply in by mu, we get this mu. It must have been a typo, but that should be a mu naught, by the way. But anyways, when we uh, take the difference between the two uh, normal derivatives, it indeed equals negative mu naught k. So good to go.